Glioblastoma is unquestionably one of the most malignant disorders. And in most patients, there's no cure. Median life expectancy ranges between 12 to 14 months. Despite the conventional treatment, which includes surgery, radiation therapy, and chemotherapy, temozolomide, temodal. Unfortunately, despite all available procedures, disease remains incurable. In many situations, surgery cannot be accomplished because the tumor exists in a location that cannot be reached by the surgeon, or else, in some situation, the tumor location is such that if the surgeon will try to take it all out, the patient will be severely damaged and paralyzed. So, unfortunately, even if the tumor appears to be rejectable, uh, it is impossible to kill or to eliminate the last cancer cell because the tumor can easily penetrate and you cannot visualize single cells. Also, the surgeon is not interested to try to kill everything because then it will cause some damage. So the goal is not only to eliminate the tumor, but also to leave a patient in good general condition. Never, even in situations that the surgeon is convinced that he took all the tumor out, disease comes back. And therefore, we need to think about smarter ideas in addition to the conventional treatment if we are trying to improve the situation for the future. And I believe that such measures do exist. First of all, we can apply a variety of anti-cancer immunotherapy procedures, each complementing each other, synergistic anti-cancer modalities, number one. These are well tolerated, not dangerous, and can be very effective. In addition, uh, if a patient still resists or has residual disease despite all available immunotherapeutic procedures, I believe that the next breakthrough is going to be oncolytic viruses. These are viruses that are harmless against normal tissues, and therefore they are well tolerated. But if they can penetrate into the cancer cells selectively or relatively selectively, they can replicate inside the cells, cause apoptosis or cell death, and then the new virions can go out and infect additional cells. So that can be extremely effective because that virus can kill cancer cells, but that's not all. In addition, cancer cells that were not killed, that are now decorated or coated with viral antigens, viral proteins or peptides, now can serve as a target for attack of the immune system. The immune system usually does not attack self. It also does not attack cancer cells that sometimes are more similar to cells than different from self. And therefore, if the viral antigens are now present in the tumor tissue, now the immune system will attack because it will see the virus. And therefore, using oncolytic virus, it's a two-step procedure. Step one, direct killing. Step two, immunotherapy against cancer cells that express viral antigens. When uh, we decide to apply oncolytic virus, first of all, we have to be sure that uh, it is okay from a regulatory point of view. Because unfortunately, as of now, treatment with oncolytic viruses has not been recognized as an approved treatment. So we need to make sure that we get approval from regulatory authorities or to apply the treatment in places where no restriction exists. Number two, uh, I usually prefer to start treatment intravenously just to make sure that the virus circulates in the blood system because blood exists everywhere, it also penetrates the brain. But uh, I believe that immunotherapy should start after treatment with oncolytic virus because if we start on, uh, the anti-cancer immunotherapy before we treat the patient with virus, there's a good chance that the immune system will reject the virus much earlier. 
and we don't want the virus to be rejected. We want the virus to have enough time to do the job. However, after, let's say, two weeks of treatment, according to my hypothesis, this is the time to apply immunotherapy because cells that were not killed by the virus now have a chance to be killed by an immune system that attacks the cells that are now coated with viral antigens. I believe, although it has to be proved, that later on treatment could be also continued by intranasal application of the virus because there is a very narrow, very narrow bridge between the upper part of the nose and the brain, and there's a good chance that if the patient will sniff the virus, it will penetrate into the brain. Now, imagine, can you imagine if we can cure glioblastoma with oncolytic virus by intranasal drops? That will be a major breakthrough. This is my hypothesis, but it remains to be proved. By the way, we are now recently discovered a new virus uh, that uh, kills in the test tube every cancer, not only glioblastoma, every cancer we tested was killed. So this is now a new research we are starting, and if we can show that something that occurs in the test tube can also occur in the patient's body, that will be a great accomplishment. But that remains to be seen.